Thanks for tuning in to the Mission Matters Podcast, where we feature successful, mission-driven leaders committed to creating a positive change in the world. Our mission with this channel is to inspire other leaders by providing industry insights, new ideas, and inspiring stories from the pros. All right, Paul Feith here, host of this show, uh, where I talk with leaders heading up mission-focused organizations, always leading from the heart, inspiring others, including myself, and making a difference in our communities. Uh, this episode is sponsored by Paul Gregory Media, a certified B Corp. To find out more about what a B Corp is or what Paul Gregory Media does, go to paulgregorymedia.com. I am super excited about today's episode. I have with us Chase Harmer, founder of Wishes, and they solve the biggest problem which exists. Maybe you didn't even know it existed, but maybe you do. Uh, the biggest problems which exist in the charitable giving space by making donations for social impact instant fully transparent, that's a big one, tax deductible, rewarding, and probably a few other things that we're going to dig into in just a moment here. So Chase, welcome. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks. I appreciate it. And uh, super pumped about uh, doing this show with you, Paul. Yeah. Well, thank you. You know, something happened to you that we talked offline and you somewhere along the line lost faith in donating. You didn't know where the money goes, which I think all of us really kind of feel that sometimes. But you were talking about how you always head up every time you go shopping for a donation. Tell us about that. Oh, I mean, everyone's experienced this. If you go outside of uh, your door and shop anywhere in America, uh, you, you go to a grocery store, a major chain, and every single one of them now, they uh, they found out that it was a good idea because it helps increase scale, sales. So now you get hit up for a dollar uh, because they saw that technically when you go to a shopping cart and you uh, ask for to support a mission, it actually helps conversion rates. That's really why they started doing it. It really had no impact on them wanting to give back, but everyone does it now. I was irritated the fact that everyone does it. It's kind of got me jaded, but even when you donate to, let's say a big crisis or uh, something that happens, the tornadoes, the, you know, the floods, the fires, everything that happens and you donate to cause because you want to help somebody in that moment. Um, the reality is, is you never really can help anyone in that moment uh, because if you're donating to a charity, it's going into a general fund um, and they're just dis deciding how they're going to spend those those dollars. It never really goes to the ground floor operations to be spent at that moment. Um, most charities that support ground floor operations are big, huge charities, and uh, they're just collecting funds and they, they allocate funds as they see fit. They're not actually going to somebody or something. And a lot of times those big charities they'll give you everyone the same exact thing. They can't make exceptions to the rule because they have to provide it to everyone. So it's not that they're bad, but you know, the mother with three daughters and the dad with, you know, two sons and uh, a dog, you know, they all need different things, right? He needs dog food. He needs this, he needs that. He does plastic bag with a bar of soap. It's not going to help him. Um, you know, and the, you know, kids, they need dolls and these things to be comforted, you know, and, and uh, because they lost everything in a fire. So I think everybody needs different things. And I was tired of not ever knowing the impact that my dollars made. And I think that was the biggest thing that was missing in charitable giving. Everyone asks you for a dollar. No one actually tells you how it's spent. They get the tax deduction. No, no one gets the tax deduction that contributed to those, those massive amounts of dollars that are being done. And um, you never actually know the impact that you're making ever. Um, you, there's no connection in charitable giving anymore. I was just tired of giving to an empty shell. Um, I'd like to understand where it goes and how those dollars are being impacted to the causes that I wanted to support. Like, how is it being used? How did my dollar make a difference? How did my $10 make a difference? You know what? You never know. Not when it's done the, that way, especially through stores. But you just mentioned something that I hadn't thought about, which is who gets the tax deduction? Who gets the write-off? I mean, they're collecting millions right. of dollars or even yeah. hundreds of thousands of dollars. I'm not going to write off my $1 cash or my... 100%. Round. But guess right. who? Guess the grocery store, they collected, they have 6,000 locations. Each one of them is asking for a dollar at checkout. You know, they get a bazillion people to donate a buck. Now they have, now they're donating $60 million to charity. It's like, they just got a $60 million tax deduction for asking for, by asking you for a dollar. It's the biggest scam of all times for a business. I mean, because they, they don't even really care how those dollars are spent. They're just getting the massive tax deduction and they're getting publicity um, in the, in the, in the, you know, on TV or on the internet, they can be seen as the good guys. Like, Hey, look what we did. Like they actually didn't do any of it. Like 60, 60 million customers that donated a dollar did. 
Yeah, I'm not sure what the timeline is. Like you said, it's they're put into a fund, then they release it when they feel it's good and ready, I guess, uh, or they do it monthly. Well, the other thing right? is, is it's all calculated on one receipt. You can't split that into different two two different bank accounts, by the way. So it's itemized in their POS section. So essentially, right. that's all going to their own fund, which then they basically carve out. So how much do they actually carve out? How much is admin by the supermarket? Who actually knows? Someone's got to you know, decide where that money goes. That's a personnel expense that they can they can write off to actually. So do they actually get 100? Does 100% of that dollar go to whatever they're saying it goes to? Probably not. Right, because of the admin fees or resources. Yeah, think about someone's got to split that money on the back end. Right, right. <laughs> well, it's going you, to their general operating account. You not only got angry about this, you did something <laughs> about it. So yeah. I'm dying to hear about wishes. Yeah, well, you know, I figured, uh, I mean, that's just one of my gripes. I mean, one of my many gripes, you know, but I think, you know, uh, it's the people that do the squeaker wills that kind of create create the most uh, change. And, uh, you know, you got to have to squeak your will to, to make that happen. So, yeah. you know, I, I spent the last nine years building financial technology, uh, creating virtual credit card technology specifically um, in the business world. Um, you know, a perfect example of this is like an Expedia type of transaction where a consumer makes a purchase to Expedia. Expedia is not the hotel or the airline. But they still have to pay those suppliers to book those reservations. So what we do is they just sit in the middle as a middleman. They cut off their fee. So the, the customer pays 100 bucks. They take $10, 90 bucks goes to the hotel. But how do they pay that hotel? It's with a virtual credit card, right? So I had been building that technology for you know 10, nine years before this. And I was like, well, what's a donation? You have a person or a cause, right? And then they got to spend that money on products or services. So you can create that. How do you create that whole economy of that transaction? Well, you create the whole economy by having a place for donors to donate. Then you have places for wishers, the nonprofits or people or causes that are collecting this money. Then you have to have a, a place where they can spend those dollars and, ha and, and a mechanism for them to spend that money that they get. And so if you can build that whole entire ecosystem, then you have the whole chain of events that you can make transparent. So I just created that. So we essentially created contracts with about a thousand different big box retailers, um, you know, CVS, Walgreens, uh, you know, Kroger's, you know, uh, Sam's Club, Costco, uh, Macy's, all the big ones, right? And so anywhere you can also spend money, Tommy broke his arm or, you know, Nancy needs groceries or whatever the case may be, you can spend it instantly inside of our platform. How do you make it? How do you make payments instant? Well, you know, through pretty much every single crowdfunding platform in existence right now, they're all built as a for-profit company. GoFundMe, all of the book count. All, so you can't actually get a tax deduction because they're not built like a nonprofit. So you can't actually get a tax deductible event, even if you're helping Tommy with his broken arm. Why? Because as an individual, you can't actually donate to another individual and get a tax write-off. However, if you donate to a nonprofit, that actually is governing the impact for Tommy's broken arm. Now you can donate to Tommy, you know, through the nonprofit. The nonprofit can actually govern the impact of that transaction, and you can get a tax deductible event for that donation. So the so wishes is a nonprofit. Really solves the biggest problem for all crowdfunding platforms that none none of the crowdfunding platforms can actually solve. They can't give you a tax deduction on the on the biggest things that their people are raising money for, which are health related things like, hey, my dad has cancer. You know, Tommy broke his arm. Whatever that is, you want to help that person, you can't get a tax write off. But on wishes, you can. And the other cool thing about wishes is we actually make it rewarding. And get dip into the rewarding part is everyone's credit card today, you usually get rewards for the big bonus cashback credit card bonuses categories, which is like restaurant purchases, grocery purchases, ride share, uh, hotel, uh, you know, airfare, groceries. So through our platform, if you're helping Tommy with groceries or you're helping um, Nancy escaped a fire in Maui and she wants to you can take a flight back to San Jose. You can actually, you can buy them an airline. You can donate to a airline, to airline category or a hotel category, a grocery category, or those a restaurant category to buy someone a meal. You can do that directly through our platform and actually get any, your, your credit card company will see it as a hotel purchase or a restaurant purchase or an airline purchase. And your 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 credit card will give you a cash back for hitting those bonus categories through our platform. It's very, we set it up. I'm a payments guy, mm -hmm. so I set it up in a way that everyone, any donor, can get actual cash back from a donation. So not only do you get the actual tax incentives, but you get the rewards credit cards on your, you get the rewards and bonus ca uh, cash back on your own credit card when you make those donor purchases. And 
that's pretty tricked out. I love that part of the platform and it kind of makes me happy. Um, but that is you, awesome. I have to tell you, because you're almost creating like a restricted fund. You want that person yeah. to use it for airline. Or exactly. Airfare. And we exact. So we actually, so part of having the virtual card platform is we actually, when you allocate these cards, they can only be utilized in our shopping platform for uh, hotel purchases or uh, airfare purchases or grocery purchases at all. the. But these are places where they would shop anyways. You shop at, you know, Kroger's, you shop at Ralph's, you shop at Safeway, you shop at wherever you're shopping at, Costco, Sam's Club. You can, it's all in our platform. So you can shop all in there, instantly deploy those funds, make the purchases for whatever that is you need. And we make sure that it's transparent because we're the card issuer. So we're issuing real MasterCards inside of the platform. And because we're the card issuer, we are the card company that issues those credit cards. Essentially, we see all the transactions. So we can instantly report that back to the donor. So when a donor contributes to a cause or crisis or says, hey, I want to help this mission, I want to help this thing, we not only make sure that those, those funds are used for those things, but we report that back to the donor so they can see it in real time. Wow. Okay. So that's where the full transparency comes in. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're the card issuing company. So like we actually can see all those transactions in real time. So we actually report them back to the donor as soon as their funds are allocated. So they actually know, oh, like, cool. You want to know, like, hey, I, I want to, if I want to know that I want to help Tommy broken arm or whatever, you want to know that you helped, you know, hey, how did that help? How did that help change their lives? How did that help impact? How did those, how were those dollars allocated? It'd be, it'd be nice to know that, it, it, but the, that's not available on any platform today. Even a charity, a charity that actually knows how to report back stuff, they can't do it to you in real time. And honestly, they can't give you dollars in, dollars out. They can't tell you how your twenty dollars were spent. They can say, "Hey, your twenty dollars helped this this thing," right? They can't even tell you when those dollars were spent and how they were spent. It's impossible for them to do that because it goes in a big slush fund, and they del they allocate dollars out. So they can't tell you how your twenty bucks was spent. I mean, it's impossible no, for any. No nonprofit can't today. do that. But they, what they can do is they say twenty dollars is enough to say, um, give a child an education for a month let's say. Right, exactly. But I mean, but that's a general blanket statement that we've been hearing on the infomercial since the beginning of time. Hey, help a kid in Africa. Hey, help a pet, you know, like spend a dollar a day, only 30 cents a day on the 90 cents, whatever that thing is. It's like, yeah, like, but is it really helping a, tw a kid in Africa? Are you really actually saving a pet? Like, how do you actually know? You don't actually. And that's the reality. I mean, like, the reality is, is that we've been, you know, we want to believe this is, and I'm not a guy that is against charities. Well, I'm a guy that I'm a donor and I'm a skeptic. And so like, you know, and I, and I feel like most donors today were jaded because every single grocery store asks you for a dollar and everyone gets tired of it. You know, it worked in the beginning, you know, but now you, you probably see that, that it's, it doesn't work as well. Now people are just like, dude, bypass. No, I'm not going to give a dollar. You know, it's like, you ask me every single time. I'm not going to do it every time. I'll do it every once in a while. Maybe I have more money in my pocket. That's just because I'm feeling cheery, but I still don't know where it's going. So typically I'm not going to do it. You know, maybe on a, maybe on a rainy day in, in April, in August, I'll do it, you know? Um, but it's not typical. That's harder because it's like one or two steps removed from the actual charity. Right. So that well, yeah, I mean, that's that's a but see, I, I think you know, but I think most fundraisers today, if you look online, it just there are, are stores trying to activate things or um, or influencers trying to activate things, you know, that have an audience. Hey, let's give to this. Well, it's like, where exactly? What are we doing exactly? Um, I think you know, we just we just make it easy. We can make it easy for any influencer to actually activate their own cause or activate a cause that they're passionate about and actually not have to worry about that, where that money goes and actually be fully transparent about it. And I think we make it easier for nonprofits to raise money too. I mean, and I give you the example of the charity water. We talked about this previously, but the charity water example is, is perfect. We not, we're not against nonprofits. I think there's a lot of nonprofits that do great things. Um, and if we look at the charity water model, it's the model is, Hey, if you don't know us, you know, um, give to give to our mission. You know, if you if you do know us, you know that we have a real business, we have real people, we have like real operational costs, give to our admin. But the donor should always have that choice. I'm a I'm a donor first. And so I want to know, and every donor wants to know whether they choose to admit it or not. They they want to actually know how much goes to admin and what goes to impact. And they should be the decision maker in that process. They should be the one that says, hey, I mean, nonprofits are asking for money. 
yes, we know you have people costs. Yes, we know you're going to the mission. But like, if I'm a donor, I'm the one giving the money. So like, I should have the choice to decide where my dollars are going and like how that's being used. You shouldn't have you. You. We should be given. The, we should actually have that choice as a, as a donor. And I think ultimately that's what I was trying to resolve for myself and like millions of other donors just like me. And Charity Water is doing that with by saying, hey, you can donate to our mission that goes into one fund. Or we can donate to our organization, which goes into another fund. Yeah. And it's just and it's, and it's simple, choice. you know, and, but I think that's why they raised, you know, millions and millions of dollars. I mean, right. they're super, super successful at fundraising. Why? Because people are confident that they're using it for the right things. And I think that's it's not that people don't want to give. I think people are just tired of like not understanding. And I think, you know, we're talking to a whole new generation beneath us. I don't even know what generation of mine, maybe X, or whatever. What, what is the next one? Like Z's or something. So like I don't know my Z and their Y, X, Z, yeah. Like, it's like the generation below, below me, I'm 44. So that, you know, and then my son's age, the you know, that are in high school, those kids coming up, they want to understand. They want to know where the money goes. They're not just going to give just to be giving, you know. They want to actually understand where the money's going. And that's 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 who that's the new generation of donors that we're talking to. So at the end of the day, like that's who uh, we need to be thinking about because those are going to be the donors of the future. And those guys aren't going to be donating the old way that everyone else has been doing for a hundred years and and not used to it. I mean, we're already coming out of like a place where most donors like myself in the 40s are are just like, yeah, like I want to understand what's going on with the money. Like those guys really want to understand, you know. So, you know. Well, I think what's what's important to take away if there's a nonprofit executive director listening, um, you you actually have a platform that will empower nonprofits. Correct. Yeah. And it can be under their own brand. I mean, you know, they have their own audience. They have their own you know list of donors. So they can actually I think what we're doing is not only helping them raise money, but talk about reengagement. Like how harder is it today for you to ask me for a hundred bucks? OK, maybe once. Right. Ask me again in two weeks because you have another thing you need. Um, and I don't understand what you did with the last hundred dollars. Nice try. Right. So I might have been. It, so every single nonprofit, they know it's harder and harder to raise dollars. Right. So when you go to me and you ask me once and you can't show me what you did with my money last time, but you're asking me for more money again this time and you can't show me what you did. It's not happening. Right. But imagine that a different conversation. Right. A conversation where you can go back and say, hey, listen, look what we did. Thank you for participating in this project. Look what we did. Look at the impact that you helped create. Thank you so much. Now, by the way, we have this next project and we, we'd love to get your help again. That's a different conversation than going to ask them for going back to the well and saying, hey, give me more money. But by the way, I can't show you what I did with your last one. You know, because clearly nonprofits have a tough time even doing this within a 12 month period. To do this within a two-week period and ask for money, it's 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 not happening. You it's like a rotating list. Like, okay, I asked this guy three months ago. Let's go back to there. You know, like this is the list. It's a rotating door. Like, wouldn't it be easier if you could just show if you could show back engagement? Talking about engagement rates going through the roof. Like, this is is we're an engagement machine. You know, so you you know you can show what you did with the money. Then you could right go right back and 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 uh, start start asking for more because you need yep. more money to operate the mission. And if you can't show them what you did with your last dollars, nice try. You're not going to get money out of me. So, you know, and I'm not, I'm not a guy that's like, like against charities or giving away money. It's like, but like, dude, like, you know, I want to understand and don't ask me for money twice. If you can't show me what you did with the last one. Yeah. You know, well, that speaks to me as a donor. Impact. Yeah. It's a return on impact. I mean, I'm talking to you from a donor's perspective. I mean, at the end of the day, who do nonprofits have to get money from? Donors, you mm -hmm. know? You know, you're lucky if you have guys that just don't want to, don't care about the outcome, the return on the impact, you know, and they're just willing to give you money to get tax write-offs. But, you know, without the, the big guys that are just willing to get tax write-offs, you have to show the people what you're doing. You know, yep. that's the biggest, that's the single most important job of every nonprofit is to, to, do, to be able to show what you do with the cash. And so your platform with this real-time reporting, um, if I were to make a donation now to a cause, how fast does that transaction get to that person or that company? 24 hours. 24 so hours. So next day. Yeah. Next day. So, I mean, you know, that's quicker than um, any other crowdfunding platform out there. So if you're like, uh, so let's just say GoFundMe, right? Through the Interpower Gorilla. But 
they basically take 10 days to distribute any types of funds. Um, and if you look at, uh, and that's if they know you, um, and then if you, like the Facebook fundraising platform, which raises, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars, right? Um, they don't give funds out um, qu until quarterly. So it's every quarter, like three months you talk about. I just talk about waiting period. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you, might, you might, you live and die within that three month period. <laughs> like, you know, like that's just, that's life or death. Um, and then, you know, Instagram is 45 days. You know why? Because they all have the same problem. You know, you can't give money away fast. Why? Because there's so much fraud, actually. You know what I mean? They really have to understand and they got to, they're trying to do the donors a favor. Like, hey, listen, I don't want to give you money and then have to come out of my pocket for a million dollars because this, this was not used appropriately and all these donors want their money back. You know, they, their due diligence machine is not built for raising. They were easy to raise money because they have all the peoples, you know, all the peoples give me the money, you know, fine. But oh, wait, now we, I really got to understand who these people are, who these things are that we're giving this money to, because yep. at the end of the day, who are we liable to? We're liable to that donor. You know, once that money's spent, you know, you see those Netflix documentaries about GoFundMe. Once that money's spent, goes who on the hook for that is GoFundMe has to refund all those donors because that that crisis wasn't real. That cancer was made up, you know, um, and you know, these things weren't actually real. So like they have found out that this person, um, w you know, rented a private jet and went on a, you know, a, their own little thing, but they didn't find out why they didn't find out because later they found out through face social media that Tara was on Cancun, you know, and having a good old time, you know, and uh, then, then they realized, oh, wait, like we really need to understand what Tara's doing. And then they find out, you know, she's been on a, you know, having a good time for quite some time, you know, and uh, well, now how and do you vet them out then? How do you, how does your platform? Well, when we had, we could, so first of all, when you make the, when you make the donations, um, only MCC specific, where it's like, Hey, this is for uh, health, health related things, right? Like I need to pay the hospital bills and this and that they can only be used for that. You can't take that money. I mean, these are cards also remember, right? So, you know, nonprofits, they have the ability to connect a bank account for admin and costs and things like this. And, you know, there is a, there is a point of, trust with a nonprofit where a donor has some certain amount of trust if they're willing to give to the admin costs. And that's up to the donor to decide. But if it's to board's mission stuff related where it's product or service related, they can use it a MasterCard for any of those expenses, right? So if you're donating towards those things, um, if it's health related or if it's hotel related or it's airline related, whatever right. that is, they can only be used for those specific things. They can't, you can't, it's like a gas card. You can't go spend a thousand dollars on your gas card into Macy's. You right. just can't do it. You know, you can't buy a plane ticket with your gas card either, you know? So, um, you know what I mean? So I think that's a perfect example. Like we really restrict the MCCs so they can only be spent on things that are, um, that fall the into category. MCC. Exactly. Merchant yeah. category. So, you know, so, and plus if something slips through, let's say like, okay. uh, there's something slips through, we have the ability to, uh, uh, we have the ability to see all the transactions. So, Let's say that someone goes to the grocery store and they buy like three bottles of Jack Daniels, right? We have the ability to actually look at the basket and void out those items. And so like, we also have the ability to act because we actually can see the transactions. Remember, like we're the card company, right? We're in partnership with MasterCard. I can see the details of the basket when they're purchased. So like when we're actually able to look at the basket, we can make real time decisions. Whereas when, as a GoFundMe, like we use them as an example, because they're, you know, the 800 pound gorilla here, but also the, they have the biggest problem with fraud is that when they send it to someone's bank account, it's gone. It's a black box, buddy. Like you can't, you have no idea what's happening to that. There's cash. no yeah, itemized transactions. You can't see what happens after it goes. They're not sharing that data with you. Hey, right, uh, right. also share uh, your data with us once you get that money. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Late. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> Understandably, but uh <laughs> okay, so your system's broken up into three constituents, right? You have your wishers, yeah. which are basically who? Uh, the wishers are uh, individuals or causes that are not necessarily nonprofits. So like you might want to activate a cause or you're an influencer that has a cause that you want to donate towards, or you're not a nonprofit, but you want that money to go to a nonprofit. You're a wisher technically because you are not that nonprofit, but you're raising a money on behalf of that. So we actually... If it's towards a nonprofit, we actually restrict those funds and then we allocate those cards directly to the nonprofit afterwards. 
So you can raise money on behalf of something or you can, hey, Tommy broke his arm. So a situation. wisher doesn't have to be a nonprofit. It could be just, you know, help my kid out or. Yeah. Uh, wishers are you, wishers are individuals or influencers that are looking to activate something for themselves or someone else. Okay. Or, or else. Then you have the nonprofits, which are which essentially are in our system kind of they're different they're segmented different wisher they're essentially creating stories and things like this but they're a five legit 501c3 you know they're right. a tax deductible entity and we validate that through candid so we're attached to candid and we use their api to validate the authenticity and the, the uh, of the of the nonprofit itself and make sure that whoever's creating the story is is actually indeed attached to this not somehow using their tax id to create a story and right you know what I mean? Okay. So they're yeah. in good standing. And then your third constituency is the actual donor, right? Yeah, the donor, which can be a company. It can be, uh, you know, a person. Uh, and I think the cool thing about our platform is we also have a wallet functionality, which makes our platform work almost like a DAF. So if you think about how a DAF works, where you can actually, most donors will use this towards the end of the year where they'll just push money into a pot so they get the, the tax write off and then the DAFs will allocate the funds. DAFs, have, by the way, have the same exact problem as every other charity in the world. They can't show you what happens to the money when you put it in there afterwards. They can show you where they sent it, but that's the, the extent of what they can actually do. Um, but our platform, you can put it in a wallet, you can get the tax write off at that moment, and then you can allocate those dollars later, um, you know, down the line. So oh, okay. the thing is, is, yeah, so like, if you think about like, the reason why we built it like that is because there's always some crisis that happens in the world. Like you turn on the news and there's a new tornado that blew down half the state. And you're like, dude, I'd love to help that cause, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, if you have money in a wallet, there's no delay time to, for you to actually don't allocate funds. You can say, Hey, I instantly want to send those funds now to this family that has a story. So instead of going through a process of 24 hours, you can have money just sitting in the wallet. You can instantly allocate those funds to the people uh -huh. or people that need it most. So I think, that's really why we built that functionality because we thought that it could be super useful for the guy that's in his underwear sitting on the couch that sees the tornado and like, yo, like, I want to help that family, you know, but he doesn't have the ability to be there and actually help or do anything, but he definitely has the ability to put $20 or a hundred bucks or whatever. Right. Right. Yeah. So okay. he can have it just sitting in his wallet, you know what I mean? And then it's just sitting there. And then that is also a dual feature. Whereas at the end of the year, if you're not sure how you want to use those dollars, you can just throw 20 K into the wallet and then get the tax right off for 2024 and, then and figure out how you want to allocate it later. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's exactly. a big, that's a big feature. Yeah. 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 Well, you kind of glossed over this before, but I want to spend another minute on it. Um, yeah. I want to talk about the revenue model. How is this yeah. enterprise being funded? Yeah. So you would think this costs a lot of money to build. You would be right. Um, and you know, how do you actually make money um, in this model? Uh, you know, and funny enough, by creating the transparency, by creating this ecosystem with all of these retailers, um, by doing the very thing that nobody could actually do uh, inside of the charitable giving space, we actually create an environment that earns about 14 cents on the dollar on an average, and we're not taking it out of anyone's stake. So essentially, there's retailers that we have inside our own platform, they're paying us to send them the business. So just like, uh, you know, just like a referral, like an affiliate commission. So when you, when you think about, um, you know, when somebody sends you to typically like, hey, when somebody say, hey, send us a business, we'll give you a, you know, we'll give them a, uh, we'll give you a 20% uh, affiliate commission or something for sending us business. That's basically what this is. Essentially, when we have, we have relationships with all these big box retailers and, uh, you know, by letting these dollars be spent, um, just how they would spend it normally in any other situation, just like they'd spend it on Amazon, just like they'd spend it at Safeway, Kroger's, Ralph's, wherever. Um, we just happen to have relationships with all thousand of these retailers and they're all willing to pay us to send them to the business. And so uh, that's actually how our model uh, makes money. It well, is that's all... interesting because the, your, your revenue model is being funded by the retailer through a referral system, which doesn't touch the donor's dollars. Correct. So 100% yeah. of that $20 or whatever that donation amount is, 100% of that's going to the intended beneficiary next day Unless it's in the wall and it's instantaneous. Yeah, it's instantaneous if it's in the wall. Because if it's sitting there already, it doesn't have to go through the process of uh, payment processing, which payment processing, it, it just takes a day to get the funds. Right. You know, but once those funds are deposited, um, you know, they're sitting there. Those can be instantly allocated to anyone at any time in any story. Right. Um, because they've already you know been sitting there. So, yeah. 
I mean, essentially, it doesn't cost anything to anyone. Um, you know, it's, it's a similar, if you look at uh, GoFundMe, it's a similar process. Like, well, we have cost for payment processing on the front end, but um, none of the money is, uh, there's no, there's nothing removed from an, any donation. There's nothing taken out of the, any pot. Uh, the people, the retailers that are, the retailers are really funding our, our existence. You know? Nice. So, nice. And when does this launch, Chase? Yeah, well, you know, we're we're super super close. We've been we've been going back and forth. So we've did our final compliance with Crossover Bank Pathword. We're we're really kind of there. Um, we if if you're interested to get um, on the waitlist, um, you know, if this comes out, it, it hasn't launched yet. Um, you can go to wishes.inc. You can just go into the persona that you think is best fitting for you, either the wisher, or the nonprofit, or the donor, and uh, you can get on the waitlist there. Um, if it already is launched, you'll find us in the Wishes. Uh, you find us on iOS first um, at Wishes Inc. Um, inside of the App Store. And uh, so, but just depending on when you we hear this, if it's if it's next week, you might have to get on the wait list. You know, if it's uh, I have a feeling by the time this is live, uh, it th you're going to be live actually. Okay, yeah, I mean, I we're super we're, close. I think we're about a month and a half out. Okay, cool. Yeah, that no, we should definitely be live by then. So yeah, you'll find us on iOS first, and then also on Android. After that, I'll be the same. Wishes Inc. Um, so you know, you can awesome. go to our website in the meantime if you haven't yet downloaded it. Um, by the time you heard this, um, and you're insane. You just haven't done this yet. Because if you're a donor or you're a wisher, you need something fast. You'd love to create a story. If you're a donor, and everything, all things being created equal, you want tax deductions. You want rewarding, but you also want to understand and connect with those dollars on the other side. We're really the only platform that gives this ability uh, in yeah. today's environment. And I think uh, you just, we're worth giving it a try. Definitely check out the website. As somebody who's built websites for the last 18 years, this was extremely well done. And it's very clear. The messaging is very clear. I'm sure you guys went through some messaging exercises to get things done to its simplest, right. simplest form. Yeah. Uh, and that's evident. So, Chase, this is not a small undertaking, uh, <laughs> especially when you're talking about financial technology, right? Um, what prepared you just from a leadership lens? What prepared you to do this? Um, well, I think I, knowing what you're good at, what you're not good at, um, you know, uh, right off when I, the bat, when I started, I wanted uh, an engineering team. We needed, I wanted to have the whole engineering team in a bucket. I was not, I'm a non-tech founder, but I know enough to be dangerous. So I don't know how to develop, but I know what I need. And so I did a business deal with, uh, I basically created a partnership with an engineering team that had all of the the entire the array of everyone that we would need DevOps, you know, back end, front end, UI design, all the things. And so uh, that was the first thing that I did. And I think the reason why I knew how to do that was because I had 200 employees before, half almost 180 of them were contractors, and uh, maybe 100 of those were con were uh, you know 100 of those were contractors, um, and the job never ends with a contract, you know, because when the, when the, when uh, the contract ends is with their last, when the payment ends, you know, so there's always something that never's finished, right? Well, we didn't, you know, Hey, they go, eh. you know, there's always like that little voice inflection every time that, you know, we'll come yeah. around to the job. The ending. So I wanted to make sure that the, the engineering team was in this just as like much as I was. So that was the biggest thing I think that um, I, I learned, but then also understand what I'm good at, what I'm not good at, you know, I'm great at in the weeds building product, uh, but I'm not the best uh, people person. I think, you know, sometimes, you know, um, as a builder, you know, I can be abrasive and there's just, but it, you got to be truthful about yourself. Like, what are you good at? What are you not good at? You know, like who's yeah. going to be that person, people person, who's going to be your culture person? Like, how are you going to build this customer success out? Who's going to do the hiring? Like, you know, I'm just not so good. I'm not, I'm easy. I'm, I'm willing, willing to admit what I'm not good at and what I'm, I'm great at, you know? And I think I'm great at a lot of things, but I'm not good at all things, you know? And I think, uh, being willing to admit that is what will what help you build a good company because uh, clearly if you try to be all things and you're not good at some of them, you're just gonna you're nobody just gonna is damage good, good at everything. Yeah, yeah, That's you're important. just gonna do more damage than good. At. So I think you know making a lot of the mistakes in a previous life um, helped me uh, make all the right decisions this time. You know, around. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you being on the show, Chase. Uh, any parting thoughts for our listeners out there? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, any any time that you're innovating something, uh, there's just a lot of failure involved, um, you know, mm -hmm. so I think don't be discouraged by by failing a lot. Um, you know, in fact, if you're failing a lot that you can, you know, that you're actually doing something that matters because it hasn't been done before. So it's just taking one step uh, in front of the other, putting one foot in front of the other and keep going. And um, 
you know, just uh, keep not going. giving up on yourself, you know, and drink. Because things will always get hard, right? They're always hard. They're always hard. They're always tough. And, uh, you know, most of the time you'll be telling you, asking yourself why you're doing this, <laughs> um, yeah. you know, uh, but I think, you know, if you keep the, if you keep the mission that you started with in the beginning and you focus on what really matters um, and why you're doing it and you're willing to sacrifice anything uh, to get there, then uh, you can, you can make it happen. It just requires a lot of sacrifice and, uh, you know, persistence. Yeah. Well said. Well, Chase Harmer, everybody, founder of Wishes. Thank you for being on the show. Till next time, everyone. Thanks for listening to the Mission Matters podcast. We'll see you again next time. And be sure to click subscribe to get future episodes.